to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a telephone conversation between an employee of an airline company and a customer. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 1 to 6. GB Airlines, uh, this is Kyle speaking. How can I help? Hi, my name is Matt Walsh. I'm calling on behalf of Mr. John Sparrow to claim expenses for a delay in his flight last week. Good morning, Mr. Walsh. Uh, thank you for calling. Could you please tell me the flight number and the date of departure? The date of departure was the 24th of January, 2016. I'm afraid I don't have the flight number in front of me at the moment. OK, that's all right. One moment. Uh, could you tell me where was Mr. Sparrow departing from? He was departing from Athens. Uh, is that Athens, Greece or Athens, Georgia? Athens, Greece. Right. And what was the destination? It was Heathrow, London. Right. We've got two flights from Athens to London, Heathrow, on the 24th of January 2016. Was it the 3.25 p.m. flight or the 9.45 p.m.? It was the later one, 945. OK, so the flight number is GB1011. Right, OK. OK, yes. I can see that Mr Sparrow's flight was cancelled and he was booked on the next flight on the 25th of January at 3.25pm. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. According to our system, one of my colleagues spoke with Mr Sparrow on the phone on the 24th to inform him of the cancellation and offered to book a hotel for him for the night, but Mr Sparrow preferred to book one himself. Yes, because he didn't want to stay near the airport, as the next flight was in the afternoon. Yes, of course. Uh, could you tell me which hotel he stayed at? Yes, he stayed at the Hypnos Hotel. Oh, uh, could you spell that for me? Of course. That's H-Y-P-N-O-S. Right. Uh, thank you for that. And could you please tell me how much the total cost was for the night? Sure. It was 73 euros. Right. Uh, do you have a copy of the receipt for that? Yes, of course. Would you like me to send it to you? Uh, yes, please. Can I email a picture of it to you? Absolutely. Uh, the email address is refunds at gbairlines.co.uk. Great. Thank you. No problem. Uh, were there any other expenses you wish to claim? Actually, yes. There was also the taxi ride to the airport and the taxi ride back the next day. Right. And what was the total cost? Um, the first taxi ride was 53 euros and the second one was 42, so 63, 73, 83. Yeah, so the total was 95 euros. I'll send you the receipt for those as well. Thank you. Uh, are there any other expenses? No, I think that's it. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 7 to 10. Excellent. So if you could please send us the receipts for the hotel and the taxi rides, and after we receive them, it should take about 48 hours for the funds to reach Mr. Sparrow's account. Perfect. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Is there anything else I can help you with? Actually, yes. There's one more thing. Um, Mr. Sparrow complained about the meal during the flight. He said that it was a bit bland. Right. So he asked me if it was possible to switch to a different meal option for his upcoming flight to Kiev next week. Right, of course. Uh, just give me a minute, please. Right, I see that Mr Sparrow had the light meal option for his flight to London, and you would like to change that. Uh, what would you like to change it to? What are the other options? 
We've got 12 different meal options. Uh, would you like me to list all of them for you? Well, Mr. Sparrow has told me that he would prefer something without meat. How many of these do not contain meat? We've got three meal options without meat. Uh, we've got the vegetarian option, the vegan option, and the Asian vegetarian. What's the difference? There's a variety of different dishes served with each option. Uh, for example, next week the vegetarian option will be a small spinach and feta cheese pie, a bread roll, a salad, and tropical fruit. And the vegan option? The vegan option doesn't include any dairy products, and it also doesn't include fowl, eggs, or honey. Uh, I'm afraid I don't have the specific menu for this week, but I can email it to you as soon as it becomes available. Oh, could you do that? That would be great. Yes, of course. Uh, I can email you a detailed description of all the meal options, if you like. Yes, please. No problem. Uh, please do not forget to call us back to change the meal option. Uh, you need to do that 48 hours before the departure time for international flights and 24 hours for domestic flights. So 48 hours for this one then? Yes, exactly. Perfect. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, transatlantic flights require 48 hours. All flights within Europe require 24 hours. So in this case, you will need to call us 24 hours in advance. Um, I apologize for that. Okay, great. So, could I please have your email address so I can send you the menus? Certainly. It's matt.walsh at sparrowlimited.com. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a recreation officer at a holiday resort telling the guests about their accommodation and the activities available. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 15. Great. Well, hi everyone. My name's Jody, and I'm one of the four recreation officers here at Rainforest Lodge. My job is to make sure that you all have a great stay here with us and go away feeling relaxed and refreshed. As you can see, we're literally in the middle of nowhere at the lodge. There are no newspapers or TVs, and there's only one phone, and that's in the office. The lodge is a complete get-away-from-it-all experience, a place to unwind and appreciate the world without a lot of interruptions and distractions. From your cabin balcony, you'll find that you can't see anyone else, and the only noise you should hear is the birds. When the luggage comes, one of the guys will take it across to your cabin for you and make sure you know the way back here to the main center for dinner in the restaurant. Dinner will be served in about an hour or so. All the times of each day's activities are printed on the blue sheet you should have got in the information guides that were handed out on the coach. Each explorer trip has a different focus, so it doesn't matter how many you do or on what day, because there's always something new to discover in the rainforest. Tomorrow, I think we've still got places on the orchid and fungi tour. This is on foot and takes you to different parts of the rainforest. Or, if you prefer, there's the four-wheel drive tour to the waterfalls. 
or the fishing trip where I promise you we'll catch some lunch. <laughs> and last but not least, the famous owl cruise that leaves at 11 a.m. each day. Just in time for the crocodile's lunch. <laughs> oh, plenty to choose from here at Rainforest Lodge. Or just sit on your balcony, relax and unwind and enjoy the views. In the evenings, there is the Spotlight Tour, one of my favorites. The Spotlight Tour leaves at sundown and lets you catch a glimpse of some more of the rainforest wildlife as it comes out at dusk to feed. That's a great trip. And if you can, I'd really try to make sure you do it during your stay. You now have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the talk and answer questions 16 to 20. You've chosen to visit the rainforest in March, which is just at the end of the wet season, so you'll soon notice how well the waterfalls are running and also how damp the ground is. Things can tend to get a bit slippery, too. So if you didn't bring any walking boots, I'd advise you to hire some from the office. You'll also be much better off in long trousers rather than shorts because they will give your legs more protection. And socks are a good idea, too. There's no need to be nervous of the rainforest, provided that you treat it with respect and common sense. Most of the animals and wildlife are gentle and harmless. There are some venomous snakes to beware of, but really, they're much more frightened of you than you are of them. The other thing is that certain plants can cause irritation if you touch them with bare skin. Well, that's about all for the time being. The guys are here to take you and your luggage to the cabin. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. You will hear three students, Ben, Jane, and Tom, having a discussion about their architecture and design studies course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 25. So, Tom, did you manage to get all your reading done? Yes, Ben, I did. What about you, Jane? Me too, though it took much longer than I thought it would. Yeah, some of those dissertations are really long, aren't they? Mm. Mm. I'm not looking forward to having to write mine. Well, that's not till next year. So, shall we compare thoughts about our reading? Hmm. Let's start with 20th century architecture. I thought it was pretty impressive. There was quite a bit of detail. Yeah, all very relevant. I enjoyed the pictures, the diagrams and photos. 
Hmm, they were quite strange. Not what you'd expect to find in a dissertation,、mm. but very helpful. Whereas sometimes I couldn't really follow the arguments. Yes, a bit of a mixed bag, really. While modern construction was very serious and thorough, wasn't it? Indeed, actually, it was rather dense. I didn't find it particularly easy to read either. The index was excellent, though, so I used that to guide me around. I still think it was a bit high level. I certainly wouldn't have wanted to try and cope with it in the first year. No, that's not who it's aimed at, of course.、Mm. What about steel, glass, and concrete? Not the world's most interesting title, of course. <laughs> Again, the index was helpful, though I think we could have done with more photos. They weren't really enough to support what he was saying in places. Yeah, but what he was saying was easy to follow, wasn't it? He takes you through step by step. It was hard to believe it had been translated. Seemed very natural.、Mm. Actually, it was better written than the next one. The space we make. But we're supposed to be thinking about architectural ideas, not being literary critics. <laughs> I like that one. Really, I just didn't think it covered the whole situation.、Mm. It didn't put the question of housing into the context of the time. You mean how in the fifties economic austerity limited the finances available, while a growing population needed housing quickly? Exactly. Again, I think you're asking too much of these dissertations.、Mm, perhaps you're right. Well, I did like change and tradition. Anyway, very focused. Yes, although I did think it was oddly arranged in some ways. When you went to the index to track something down, you couldn't necessarily find what you wanted. I know what you mean, but I have to say, I'd be very proud if I'd written any of these. True. <laughs> and you will next year. Now you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen to the rest of the conversation, and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. Never mind next year. It's this year that's the problem. I'm never going to get this assignment done. Yes, you are. Come on, let's make a plan for you.、Oh, please, I'm just not sure where to go from here. I could look at city plans, study the layout of housing developments. I think you need a closer focus. The approach to small houses won't necessarily tell you what you want to know. You'd be better to concentrate on large private houses. Study the drawings of those. Okay, though I don't know how much useful detail I'll be able to get from the kinds of plans that are easily available from that period.、Mm, it's true; they can be limited.、Mm. But what you could do as a next stage is go onto the web. There's loads of useful stuff there. More detailed plans, you mean? Well, I was thinking more of illustrations, that kind of thing. Do a search for window designs. I'm sure you'll find some good ones. I agree, and not just online. See what you do find there, and then for your next step, check both campus libraries. I think you'll be able to get hold of books which will give you further information, and you need to know more about typical furniture of the time. This is all very helpful. Thanks, guys. I'm beginning to think I should be able to get something done for Dr. Forbes after all. At least I can see I'll be in a position to tell him the section headings. Well, a bit more than that would be better. Put your outline plan together and give him that to look at. Hmm. Yes. But I'll still need to keep reading, won't I? Yeah. <laughs> Once Dr. Forbes has okayed what you've done at that point, you could then go and see Dr. Gray. He's very approachable, and I'm sure he'd be happy to provide you with further references. And then you could take it from there. That'd be really useful. Well. Thanks again. Let me get you both another coffee. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You are going to hear a lecture about the achievements of the ancient Aztecs of Central America. You now have some time to read questions 31 to 40. Good evening. Good to see so many people here to learn about the fascinating civilization of the Aztecs. By the way, is the microphone working? You can hear okay at the back? Good. Let's go back to 1519 AD. Anyone know what happened in that year? Right. Hernan Cortes landed on that part of Central America that is today known as Mexico. He expected to find gold, and he did. What he did not expect to find, however, was the great Aztec civilization. Aztec legend said they originated in the plains of northwestern Mexico and slowly migrated southward. When they arrived at Lake Texcoco in 1325, they founded their great capital, Tecnatitlan, on the site of what is now Mexico City. The Aztecs developed a complex society and governmental structure, at the head of which was the emperor. They made many scientific advances, especially in the areas of astronomy and medicine. They also had a complicated religion and interest in the arts agriculture, and social conditions occupied much of their time. Let's talk about their remarkable achievements in some of these areas. You cannot do much if you don't have food to eat. So let's first take a look at their farming practices. The land that the Aztecs farmed was not fertile enough to grow enough food to support the growing population, so they were forced to invent methods to increase productivity, including irrigation, fertilizer, and even building terraces on hills to protect soil from running off, like we see today in China, the Philippines, and many other parts of the world. But one thing we don't see was their very original idea of chinapas, spelt C-H-I-N-A-P-A-S. Chinapas were floating gardens built on swamps. Actually, they were quite simple to make. First, canals were dug through the marshes and swamps. Then, mud from the canals was placed on mats woven from weeds and straw. These mats were quite big, maybe five or six meters long and two across. Trees were then planted in the bed of the swamp at the corners of each mat. The trees took root, and the chinapas were held firmly in place. The Aztecs used these floating gardens to plant their main corn and also vegetables like beans, chili peppers, avocados, squash, and tomatoes. The Aztecs were very advanced in some ways, but they didn't use animals or plows to help them work the land. In fact, they didn't even have the wheel. No problem. The soil on the chinapas was soft enough that pointed sticks were all they needed to plant crops on them. But the Aztecs were much more than imaginative gardeners. They made great advances in the sciences, especially astronomy. I'm sure many of you 
have heard of the Aztec's calendar stone. It took them 52 years, from 1427 to 1479, to build the calendar stone. It was huge, a massive piece of rock, three feet thick, twelve feet in diameter, and weighing about twenty-four tons, on which they carved pictographs for the days and months of the Aztec calendar. This showed just how advanced the Aztecs were in the science of astronomy. It makes me think of the clean air they enjoyed in those days, when they could see all the stars shining so brightly in the night sky. They would have had a big problem doing this in most parts of the world nowadays. But back to the calendar stone. It had eighteen months, each of twenty days. Namely, three hundred sixty days made one year. But they had long before worked out that there are three hundred sixty-five days in a year. So they added five days, which they called the nemantemi or sacrificial days, to get three hundred sixty-five. Remember, this was one hundred three years before the Gregorian calendar that we use today. Very sophisticated, those Aztec astronomers. And they were not only clever astronomers; the Aztecs made great advances in medicine. At the time, many Europeans looked down on the herbal medicine of the Aztecs as a heathen practice, just like they used to look down on traditional Chinese or African medicine. But in fact. Aztec doctors could do more than even the best doctors in Europe. Their medicine was primarily based on spiritual healing and herbal healing. Spiritual, because they believed many illnesses were caused by such things as an angry god or bad birth signs. So their first step in treating an illness was always prayer. And sometimes animal sacrifice, but they also used herbal medicine, and concentrated much of their medical science on finding out what herbs could do, just like the ancient Chinese doctors. So, over generations, the Aztecs accumulated a vast knowledge of the herbs in the world around them, and the medicinal properties of each one. One difference with traditional Chinese medicine is that the Aztecs concentrated more on curing the symptoms of a disease than getting at the cause of the disease. They felt that if a god or goddess wished to make them ill, then they could do nothing about the root cause, namely a god. If the medicine worked, it meant that the gods approved of the patient getting well again. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.